Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? Good. Well, welcome to Johnson County Community College and welcome to the Polsky Theater. My name is Christy McWard. I am Director of Marketing and Event Management here at the college, and we are so pleased to have you here with us for tonight's Polsky Practical Personal Enrichment Series. Our topic tonight is Unlocking the Great Pyramid, Khufu Revealed. And our speaker, Jean-Pierre Houdin, comes to us from Paris. Um, he's been here for about a week in the United States, and he's here with us tonight, and we are so excited. This is actually the first of two lectures that Jean-Pierre will be giving at JCCC this week. Um, tomorrow, he'll be presenting in the afternoon, 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, over in our Nerman Museum, the Hudson Auditorium on the second floor. Like this lecture, it is also free and open to the public, so I hope that uh, you'll consider coming back for more of uh, Jean-Pierre's um, amazing story and his research. The two lectures are different. You do not have to attend both to enjoy one, so um, I hope you can come to both. Um, I see some of our regular Polsky patrons here tonight. So great to see you. Um, for those of you who are new to the Polsky series, I do want to let you know that the Polsky Practical Personal Enrichment Series was established here at the college in 1997, and it is underwritten by the Norman and Elaine Polsky Family Supporting Foundation. And it's in partnership with our JCCC Foundation here. And the series really seeks to educate and empower the public in areas of education, health, wellness, financial stability, and other issues um, not covered elsewhere. So we lot, like to keep a lot of variety here at the Polsky Series. And those of you who um, come to see us regularly know that we, we do that. Um, you can find more information about the Polsky Series and about Norman and, and Elaine in the booklet, if you picked one up when you uh, came in this evening. Um, they were uh, great um, philanthropists to the community and good friends to JCCC. Um, in those booklets, you will find two cards. You will find a green card. And on this green card, we invite you to provide your feedback on the event. Let us know how you liked it. And let us know whether other topics you would like to see us present here at the college and as part of the Polsky series. So many things that we do come because of your ideas and we like to listen to you. So please give us your feedback and just hand these to the usher before you leave and, and we'll um, get those. And also I wanna assure you, when you provide us your email address, we use that to tell you about upcoming events. We don't use it for anything else. We don't share it with others and uh, we respect that. So, so thank you for providing that. The second card in your booklet is a blue card. And the blue card is for your questions tonight. So after Jean-Pierre speaks tonight, um, there's gonna be time for audience Q&A. But we're especially um, proud to have my colleague, Stacy Davidson. Stacy, stand up and raise your hand. Stacy is an instructor here at JCCC, and she is an Egyptologist. And she is the only Egyptologist in the Kansas City area. And so we, she is ours, and she is here tonight, and she's going to host a conversation with Jean-Pierre after his presentation using your questions. So again, as he is speaking tonight, you think of a question, please write it down on the card, hand it to the ushers, and they'll get it to us, and Stacy will get to as many questions as possible. Um, I do want to give special thanks to Anna Page. Anna, are you here? Anna Page is our director of the honors program at uh, Johnson County Community College for her, and she's helped um, to coordinate this event. So I want to give a little recognition to her and tell you that the JCCC honors program is designed to stimulate and challenge academically talented students. And they take honors coursework that includes community outreach, interdisciplinary courses, and leadership skills. And our honors program will actually be part of tomorrow's event in the Nerman Museum. Before Jean-Pierre speaks, our honors program students will be doing a showcase of their work in the atrium. So if you come to tomorrow, please take a look at that. And there will also be some Egyptian-inspired refreshments there. I don't know what that means exactly, but you need to come and find out, as will I. <laughs> And finally, I do want to tell you that um, you can find more information about the Polsky series and learn more about our events on our website, and that is www.jccc.edu slash Polsky series. So visit often, and you'll um, find out more. Okay, it's almost time to bring out Jean-Pierre. 
I usually do the introductions of our speakers, which I'm always happy to do, but tonight I want to give that honor to one of our very special students here at JCCC. Um, John Reeves really dreamed up the idea for this event. He saw a National Geographic do documentary fe featuring Jean-Pierre Houdin and uh, was fascinated by his work and his theory and made contact with him. They struck up a transatlantic friendship and long story short, that friendship led to Jean-Pierre visiting us tonight. And he is here for two days with us. He's going to be speaking with other students and classes. And uh, it's a real treat to have him here. So I want to give the honor of introduction to Jean Reeves. Jean is an automotive technology major here at JCCC. He is currently our student senate president. And he is founder of the American Veterans Research Project. Please help me welcome Jean Reeves. Thank you. It is my pleasure uh, to introduce our speaker tonight. Uh, Jean-Pierre Houdin is a Paris-born architect. Uh, back in 1999, his father, who was an engineer, uh, suspected that the Egyptian pyramids may have been built from within. Uh, he asked his son, Jean-Pierre, an architect familiar with computer-assisted 3D design, uh, to support him in research that could prove his theory. From there, Jean-Pierre embarked on an unusual adventure to solve the riddle of building the Great Pyramid of Khufu with the internal ramp theory. From there, Jean-Pierre, excuse me, I already said that. Uh, uh, thanks to 3D simulations and animation, uh, working in tandem with Dassault Systems, his theory uh, was validated in 2005. Six years later, research revealed the probable existence of two antechambers uh, inside the pyramid and adjacent to the king's chamber. A second ascending corridor uh, would directly link these antechambers to an already known entrance on the north face. So for nearly 10 years, Jean-Pierre worked with Egyptian antiquities uh, to carry out a scientific mission on site at the Great Pyramid uh, using non-destructive technologies. In collaboration with two universities, he used two techniques, Inferred and Muon's uh, radiography, uh, to further his theory. Uh, last fall, the Scan Pyramids mission was launched by the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities, and this mission is expected to last more than a year and is coordinated by the Faculty of Engineering uh, in Cairo and at HIP in, uh, Institute of France. 2016 marks the 18th year of Jean-Pierre's research on this extraordinary pyramid, uh, which is listed among the seven wonders of the world and is the only wonder of the world still standing today that you can go see. Uh, he was featured in a National Geographic documentary and has co-authored a book, uh, which from what I understand was on sale before tonight's lecture, and he will be doing uh, book signings after tonight so in the lobby, so feel free to uh, go and talk to him and get your book signed. Uh, and those will also be for sale again at tomorrow's lecture. So we are very fortunate to have Mr. Hooten here with us tonight to personally share his fascinating theory and research with us. So please help me welcome Mr. Jean-Pierre Houdin. So I want to thank uh, John because uh, he's a smart guy and uh, he had the good idea to invite me with Christy <laughs> to this lecture. In, uh, uh, I will say first that, uh, as uh, John said, the, the original idea was from my father. And uh, in uh, January 1999, after watching uh, a TV show about the construction of the pyramid, he, as an engineer, said, oh, if I have to build a pyramid one day, I will build the pyramid from the inside. And this was the only thing which started, began my work on the pyramids. And I quit everything, and for 17 years, I work only on the pyramids. So, uh, as my father said uh, often, uh, he did 5%. I did 95% of the job, but without the 5% of the beginning, I won't be there tonight. So uh, my father passed away uh, uh, in October uh, 2014 after a lecture in Gastonia in North Carolina. But uh, I am very proud of my relationship with my father. So I want to, to give him some credit for all this uh, work. 
you know about pyramids, but uh, what you know about pyramids uh, is, uh, is not very, uh, very uh, understandable and very convincing, because uh, I think that uh, people left aside the, the part, the construction part of the pyramid, because it was so huge as a, as a problem. So uh, they work on the digging, they work on the hieroglyphs and things like that. But about the construction, nobody went very far uh, with the, the pyramids. And thanks to the idea of my father, I will build from the inside. The solution came very, very easily, like a, a, a ball of wool, and you, one, uh, you have one end of the of the, the string, and you start to pull the string, and at the end you see that you have no more balls, you have just a string completely uh, unrolled. And you will see that uh, you will be the judge of uh, my work. But uh, I think that uh, you will understand that uh, the way to think inside instead of outside changed everything. Uh, I worked for uh, uh, 17 years now, and uh, my first seven years were I was alone, and I had to, to sell everything, I had to pursue my, uh, my research. And in 2005, I was contacted by Dassault System, which is a, a software company, one of the world leaders software company. Uh, Boeing built, uh, designed the, the planes with uh, these uh, softwares. And we worked for 10 years together, and we still work together. And uh, you will see that uh, the images are, are really amazing. In reality, in France, uh, I did 40 lectures in the IDAM, uh, IMAX dome with uh, a 400 square meter screen with uh, uh, 3D glasses and uh, live, live comments. It was very exhausting, like, uh, Lecture very exhausting, but it was wonderful. And it, it, was, it started in 2000, 2007 till 2011, and uh, 10,000 people went. And uh, I had also a, a, a shorter uh, lecture. I was not the lecturer, but uh, students were lecturer for kids. And uh, 32,000 kids went to. To, to show, to, to, to see the show. And uh, I uh, agreed to come to GCC uh, College because I think that knowledge is very important in life. And uh, knowledge about ancient Egypt is important. And the knowledge about the knowledge of ancient Egyptians, you will understand that 45 centuries ago, these people were very smart. Very, very smart. And we have a lot of lessons to learn from these people. If they were morons, I won't be there. <laughs> they were not morons. And uh, I, I uh, often think with the people who, who build the pyramids, I ask questions uh, inside myself, and I, often I say, Did you, have you done that? And the question, they have the answer. And they, they, they always had a very uh, smart answer to problems. So we will go uh, for a, a journey in the pyramids. You know, Khufu's pyramid is the biggest one. But uh, Khufu's pyramid is on the Giza plateau. But uh, the pyramid were not, was not uh, uh, brought by the aliens. Forget that. And was not built by slaves. Forget that was built by people well, well uh, fed and uh, well uh, paid uh, with uh, uh, lodging, with uh, uh, food for feeding. And, uh, I am French, so sometimes <laughs> I am lost in the words, but uh, in English words. But they, they will come. Uh, come uh, so you see uh, Khufu's pyramids is five 0.5 million tons, metric tons of stones. I imagine, second, 5.5 million 
metric tons of stones. And uh, look, I am very small. <laughs> Before the pyramids, why we have pyramids in Egypt? This guy, his name is Ginger. He's, it's a mummy, but it's a natural mummy. Uh, he is uh, sleeping at the British Museum right now. You, you, you could, uh, on his shoulder, say, we, we go to uh, a drink. He, he, maybe he could uh, stand up. <laughs> and uh, when the first tribes arrived along the Nile River 5,000 years ago, they, 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 they uh, settled on the, on the bank of the river, and they, st they start to be uh, uh, settlers and to make uh, farms and uh, farming and uh, uh, to, to settle. And uh, when you settle somewhere, you die. But the Nile River is uh, not very large, and you have uh, just uh, a few uh, uh, places to farm, to, and uh, uh, on both sides, it's 30 kilometers large. And uh, on both sides, you have deserts. So when the people died, they were uh, unable to be buried on the grassland near, near the river, because every year you have the flooding. So the corpse were uh, uh, going up from, the, from the, the soil, from the ground. So they had the idea to dig, to dig uh, uh, holes in the desert, on the west side of the desert of the Nile. And uh, it was so dry, so hot, that uh, when they put the, the, the corpse, they put sand, sand above. Uh, and uh, with time, they, some uh, animals went to uh, unburied the, the, the dead. So they saw that the guys were uh, mummified, naturally mummified. So uh, first idea of uh, mummification came from that. And uh, like in the... Uh, in the Western movie, uh, the first idea was to put stones on the graves. And one day, one guy said, these stones are not very uh, uh, pretty. Put me uh, in, a in a grave with uh, a better uh, uh, stones. Uh, so in Mastabas, uh, where's the first uh, real tomb for the, the dead? From the Mastaba, uh, in uh, the third dynasty, you had a, a king, Djoser, and his architect, Imhotep. And uh, Imhotep uh, said to his king, I will buy, uh, build for you a, a very large Mastaba. And uh, it was the first uh, stone building on earth. You will see his pyramid. Uh, on the next, uh, after, uh, at the beginning of the fourth dynasty, after Djoser, you have a family. Uh, you have uh, Snefru on the, on the left, top left, Snefru, the father. In the middle, you have K Kufu, the son. And uh, on the left, uh, below, you have uh, Kefren Kafre, the grandson. And you have the boss architect from this family on the top, Emunu. And on the, the uh, bottom, you have Ankhaif. These people carried 17.5 uh, million tons of stone in 18, uh, 80 years. The biggest, uh, the biggest builder on Earth. Pyramids. The first pyramid, on the left, you have a Joseph pyramid at Saqqara. The, the stones are small, and they are uh, piled up like a, like a cake, you know. And the, the, the tomb, the grave, is uh, dug uh, in a pit below the bedrock, uh, deep in the bedrock, 30 meters in the bedrock. On the right, you have a Maidum pyramid, the first pyramid with a smooth face, and... Uh, the, the grave, the tomb, is at the ground level, and the first time that uh, a roof is built 
in the middle, in the core of the body of a pyramid. After that, you have the bent pyramid in Dashur on the left, and you can see that you have chambers dug in the bedrock and one chamber uh, in the core of the pyramid. The next one, uh, the bent pyramid is from Snefru, the, fa the father. The, on the right, you have the red pyramid, which is from the same king. And like you, you can see that the, all the funeral apartments are inside the body of the pyramid. This was possible because the guys, the architect invented the corbelling roof on the, on the left. These are blocks of stones piled up with uh, uh, going narrower each layer after each layer. And this, uh, this kind of roof can bear very high loads, vertical loads. No oblique loads, but vertical loads. And the second uh, uh, base of the pyramid is the blocks of the facing blocks, Tura limestone. It's a limestone very, very white, very thin, and very uh, soft when it is, it is still in the quarry. Once you quarry the, the block, it becomes harder because you have a calcine which uh, starts to. This is a quarry near Cairo right now. And you see that the Tura limestone is very white and very smooth. These are uh, tools and uh, boats. You have the Khufu boat on the, on the top. And you can see the hull, how the hull was, was uh, worked with uh, ropes. And uh, these ropes are 45 centuries old, and uh, on the right you have a sled on which the, the, the blocks were carried. This one has a 10 metric tons uh, load uh, 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 possible. Khufu's pyramid. Khufu's pyramid, as you can see, that all the apartments, except one uh, in the bedrock, are very high in the, in the body of the pyramid. You have, uh, in red, you have the corridors. In, uh, in green, you have the corridors. In red, you have the queen chamber. The name is not the real name of the chamber. The Arabic gives the, the, the Arabs gives this name in the middle in the Middle Age. You have a, a, a blue, uh, a blue work, blue uh, blue room. This is Grand Gallery. A lot of people uh, have questioned about this room. And on top, in yellow, you have the king chamber, the burial chamber. In fact, the construction of the Khufu's pyramid, uh, you have two building sites in the same uh, construction. You have the construction of the volume itself, and you have the construction of the king chamber. And the king chamber is built full of granite. And uh, in this uh, room, you have a granite sarcophagus and the granite beams is the first time you have a, a, a room with a flat roof, a flat ceiling. And this, the flat ceiling, is a big problem of the construction. So you have to imagine two constructions, two problems, separate problems in the same construction. One thing the Egyptians understood is that in any pyramidal volume, square-based square base pyramid volume, and you can make the calculation, at one-third of the ice, you have two-thirds of the volume. At, uh, and uh, for the last two-thirds, you have only one-third of the volume. So the construction process are not the same for the lower part and the upper part. This is a beam of the ceiling of the king chamber, and you have five ceilings. The beams uh, weighed between 30 and 65 metric tons. And these beams are not from uh, the, the era of Giza. These beams were carried 
at uh, Luxor, Aswan, and 800 kilometers south of uh, Giza. So they have to brought uh, 42 beams like this one from Aswan. And uh, to quarry uh, that kind of, uh, of uh, beam, you need uh, five years, six years, seven years. So you can't put the beams at the beginning of the construction. You have to start the construction of the pyramid and imagine a, a, a device to bring the, to pull the, 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 the beams at a, a level where the pyramid will be 14 years after the beginning of the construction. All the theories you, you can read in books are based on the fact that the pyramids were built from the outside. You have on the top the very large ramp. And uh, when you look at the topography of the plateau, the only place to put this ramp would be uh, like uh, on this image. But the problem, you have the quarry at the same place. You have to choose between the quarry or the ramp. And uh, as I told you, at uh, one third of the ice, you have two thirds of the volume. So with a small ramp, you can build two thirds of the volume. So it's quite easy. But if you want to build the last one third of the volume, you have to, to build a ramp with, which is twice the volume of the pyramid. It's for just 15%. It's crazy. On the, on the back, on the bottom, you have the idea of an external ramp uh, rising spirally around the, wrapping the pyramid. But uh, how will you, would you uh, bring up 60 ton beams on a, on a ramp like this? And how can you uh, uh, fix a ramp on a smooth face? And why a smooth face? You have uh, the idea of Herodotus, which was a, a, a Greek who went in Egypt uh, uh, two, uh, 2,000 years after the construction of the pyramid. And the guy told him uh, uh, the pyramid was built with a small piece of wood. And so most of the people thought that it was so small machines with uh, uh, steps. And after the steps were uh, faced, were cut at the end of the construction to, to give the, the smooth face of the pyramid. But that could not work because the, the stone, the, the Tura lime stone, in, in 20 years was very hard. So Egyptians didn't have any iron uh, tools because, not because they were uh, stupid, but only because they were uh, unable to forge. They were unable to go high in temperature, so they were only able to forge copper. So the only chisels they had were copper. And uh, the, the more important thing, if you build a pyramid with steps and you start to face the pyramid at the end of the construction, you have five years of work on top to face the pyramid, starting from the top, going down, and you can't check the, 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 the edge of the pyramid. You can't. It's the craziest idea. I have 3D, Egyptian adds 3D. It's very easy to have 3D. You work with grids, a, a, a horizontal grid, vertical grid, and uh, Egyptian have a, a, a system which, which was a half a metric system, 50, uh, 50 centimeters, uh, a qubit, a royal qubit, uh, divided in a, Seven, uh, seven palms and 28 digits. With that, they were able to, to design uh, as we design something. And everything in the pyramid fits in a grid of one qubit. 
The uh, king chamber is 10 qubits by 20 qubits. Queen chamber is uh, uh, 10 qubits by 11 qubits. And all my work is in qubits, not in metric. So you have also in the vertical, you have also the... It was easy for the guy to say, we are going to build... The design starts from... Uh, the, you, you see you have a, a red point uh, uh, in the middle of the pyramid. This is the starting point for the design. Most of the design was built, was designed from this point to bottom. So it was easier after that to start from the bottom and go to this point. It was easy for them to design the pyramids. They, knew, they had to find the north to, for the orientation of the pyramid facing north for uh, religious uh, meanings, for, uh, and they need also axis. So the north-south axis was the base of the pyramid to put the grid for the, the construction. So, the, you have seen that from the outside it would be very difficult. From the inside it's very easy, because at the quarry, the quarrymen cut the, the stones from the facing with uh, templates, and each stone was uh, get a stamp of its position on the face, uh, the level of the, uh, of the uh, at which level, you have uh, 210 levels in the, in the pyramid, the Khufu's pyramid, and the levels are not the same. You have a very different kind of level from uh, one meter to 50 centimeters. So the, the face of the facing of the pyramid was prepared at the quarry. A stamp on the back with the position on the pyramid and sent by uh, the haulers to the pyramid. And the workers had just to set in place the blocks which were prepared before. So the pyramid is built with the facing blocks from Tura limestone, and you have a second be uh, belt behind the facing blocks, which is built with uh, local limestone, quite uh, well dressed, but uh, you have only 20 meters, a thickness of 20 meters, and, the, and most of the pyramid is built and uh, filled with rough blocks from the quarry. You don't need to have very uh, sugar blocks to build the pyramid. Inside, inside the pyramid, most of the blocks are just rough blocks. And I uh, say often, if the guy at Coca-Cola uh, uh, cans, at that time, you should uh, find Coca-Cola uh, cans inside the, inside the pyramid. They, they, were, they had no Coca-Cola uh, cans, but I am quite sure that you have a lot of uh, pottery and things like that poured inside the, the pyramid. So the main step of my theory, building inside, this is uh, at uh, the fifth year. You have the, the shape of the pyramid, you have the, a, a short external ramp, and a small, very small ramp on the, the south face. And you can see that uh, the ramp will rise with the pyramid. This is uh, year 10, year uh, 14. And the external ramp will not go higher than this level. And this ramp is uh, 325 meters long. It's a very short ramp. And you can see also that uh, from the base, on the from the small ramp, you have an internal ramp starting from the base. It's very important that the ramp, this ramp, start from the base too. Year, uh, year 14, 15. Year uh, 16. You have uh, the external ramp. Uh, as a prolongation inside the body of the pyramid. You can see a, a, a second spiral ramp in a trench in the body of the pyramid. 
And uh, at this level, you are at half the height of the pyramid. You are, uh, the pyramid is uh, 146 meters high, and at this level, we are at 60, 70 meters high. It's very important to see. This point is very important. At this level, the king chamber is built also, and uh, the trench is filled. And from that, that time, Egyptians were not wasting anything. The ramp, the external ramp, is built with the same blocks as the pyramid. So now they have a lot of blocks stored inside this ramp. So the, uh, the dismantling of the ramp begins, and the blocks from the ramp are old uh, inside the internal ramp, and the external ramp is the, the blocks from the external ramp are uh, for building the upper part of the pyramid. At the end, you have no waste, no... Everything which was quarried is inside the pyramid. And the facing is done. You don't have to come back to make the facing. Pyramids were not built by slaves. They were built by uh, workers, uh, skilled workers, and uh, also peasants, farmers, coming from during the flooding of the Nile, because uh, for uh, three months, four months a year, the, Nile, the, 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 the fields along the Nile were flooded, so the guy had no work. So they came to the pyramid, and they have uh, like a, uh, a civil... Uh, a draft to work at the pyramid, and uh, they were uh, feed, they were uh, uh, paid with beer, uh, and uh, beer, they were big uh, uh, drinker of beer. Yes, yes. And, uh, you imagine also that the pyramid was built by 4,000 guys. 4,000, not 100. Uh, Thousand guys. You have no place to put uh, 100,000 guys. You look at uh, a, a pyramid. The base of the pyramid is uh, the size of eight uh, saucer fields. Just, are you uh, able to put 100,000 people on the eight saucer fields? No. At the, at the base of the pyramid, when the guy uh, worked at the base, there were 2,000 uh, in, two, uh, in two teams. One team from the upper Egypt, one team from the lower Egypt. So they have a challenge between them. So uh, the best had some uh, rewards, and the rewards were uh, mostly beer. And uh, you have uh, the name of the teams. Some teams on the Mikirinos, uh, Menkore Pyramid, were, uh, were uh, called the drunkards of Menkore. So everything is said when we, you, you say that. So you have also the village of the worker with the family. You have the butcher, the, the bakeries, and the, the, to feed all these people, to feed also the, the, the haulers of the, 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 the people uh, hauling the, the, the blocks. So in all, you had around 20, 25,000 people in the vicinity of the pyramid. But building the pyramid itself has maximum 4,000. And no slave. And you have also people, uh, quarrymen uh, on the quarry, you have people uh, at Tura on the other side, uh, on the other bank of the, the Nile River, and people at Aswan. You have a uh, lot of sailors also. And the, one of the big advantages of the Nile River uh, Aswan is in, in the south of Egypt, but the stream of the Nile River is from south to north. So they, uh, they dug canals and the harbor for the delivery of the, 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 the beams and the blocks. And uh, 
the blocks were uh, loaded on the barge in Aswan. The, the boats, the ships, uh, run down the Nile River just because of the stream. The guy had just to, to keep the, the ship uh, uh, in line, and it was very easy. They had a big stone at the, at the rear of the, of the boat, and the, 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 the stone was uh, keeping, dragging the, 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 the bottom of the Nile and keeping the, the, the ship always in line in the stream of the river. Once they, have, uh, they arrive at the harbor and the, 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 the beams or the blocks were unloaded from the ships, the guy put sails on the ships because the, the main uh, wind in Egypt uh, blew uh, from north to south. So uh, <laughs> they, they were very skilled to understand how to to, to go from one point to another point, and the Nile was their highway. So they, they dug a, a, a harbor for the material, and uh, they dug a canal with uh, the beginning of the canal, 30 kilometers upstream, to be sure to keep always the harbor with the same level of water. And the canal was built well, started 30 kilometers upstream. I have a video. So I will let. Uh, so you have the, the, the harbor, you have the, the plateau on which the pyramid is built, and the, the first beams from Aswan are uh, stored. Uh, the architect said to the quarrymen, I, we give you 14 years to cut, to carve these beams. We will manage 14 years later to uh, all the beams on the, uh, in the pyramid. These are rafters, limestone rafters from Tura, from the other side of the, of the Nile, and these are the, the facing stone coming from the Tura. And uh, they are all prepared, and they are, uh, it's a, a kind of pref prefabrication. From the harbor to the base of the pyramid, you have 40 meters difference of level. From the, and the pyramid itself is uh, 100, 146 meters high. So you have the topography of the plateau, and you can see that uh, you have the harbor, the pyramid uh, on, the, uh, on the top of the image. You have a cliff on two sides of the pyramid, of the, uh, and you have a, a, a pass uh, going up on the, on the plateau with the first quarry. And you can see uh, as uh, the construction uh, of the pyramid rise, uh, uh, the first ramp from the port to uh, the base of the external ramp, this is uh, 40, uh, 40 meters, 42 meters difference of level. And uh, after that, you have another 40 uh, meters difference of level to go to the level of the King Chamber construction where the beams will be uh, used. And you have uh, two uh, green uh, spots, you will understand why. And you, you see uh, the, the ramp is used uh, with the quarry on both sides. Everything is very close. And you can see that uh, all around the pyramid, mastabas, tombs are built because the construction of the pyramid is inside its, its perimeter.
So uh, year five, level plus set met. Sorry, I, I speed the video because. So you can see the building site, the quarries. The arrows, the white arrows are the path for the Tura limestone. The Tura limestone is very uh, uh, fragile, so all the facing blocks, blocks have their own path to go from the, the, the arbor to the pyramid. And the, uh, the Tura limestone will travel through the internal ramp from the beginning of the construction. It's a separate path from the other, uh, the other blocks. The red arrow are uh, the path for the granite beams. And the pink arrows are the, is the path for the quarry, uh, from the, the block from the quarry, south of the pyramid. So, uh, you have only uh, 40, uh, 40 meters from the arbor to reach the pyramid for the arrow, arrow, the white arrows. In fact, also, the, the ramp of the port goes higher than the base of the pyramid. So the, that uh, technique, that idea, shortened the, the, the need of the external ramp. And you can see also that uh, the, the external ramp is built in two parts. When, uh, like an uh, highway, when you have uh, works on one side, everybody goes on, one, on the other side. So, level after level, you change the lane. So, the, the, the construction is working all time. You don't have to stop the, constru the, the construction to rise the ramp. And you can see also that the pyramid was built in, his, in its own quarry. So they uh, spare 200,000 cubic meters of stone. And the white spot in the middle is a part of the, the plateau kept for the... This is a small ramp. Later, you will have the internal ramp uh, starting from this point. And you see also that the facing is done. You, you don't have to come back. You can check the... If you have to make some correction, you can uh, check the correction because uh, you are free. Uh, your edge are free, the axis are free, the diagonals are free, so you can check the rise of the pyramid. You see also the second belt. Nowadays, the pyramid, the Khufu's pyramid, has no more the facing blocks. The only blocks you can see on Khufu's pyramid are these blocks, the, the second row of the blocks. And inside, you see, just rough blocks, uh, filling with rough blocks. You sp it's a very, very uh, 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 spare of time and the work because you don't have to cut the... So you have the... the, the uh, uh, in fact, all the corridors, rooms, are built on a, a small... Uh, I call that the island. It's a, a, a circle with a, a nice blocks, well, well calibrated blocks. So it's a foundation, but it's a very thin foundation. So in the pyramids, in Khufu's pyramid, if you have something to find, you can only find this on this part. You are not going to f look other parts because you have no foundations. And you see a, a temple is built uh, at the same time. So we will leave uh, at level, uh, at this level, and we will go at level 40 now. Level 40, it's uh, uh, le uh, year 14, uh, level 43. Uh, it's the base of the king chamber. Uh, all the all the beams, granite beams, has to be uh, raised at this level. And uh, th so these beams are to be raised. 
to raise that kind of beams, you need 600 guys. You can't work with three, three, uh, 600 people pulling ropes at the same time. So the idea was to reduce the number of uh, workers, haulers. So they had the good idea work to work with counterweights. And uh, a counterweight help, helps to, to pull. And after that, it's a way to cut the, 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 the work in small parts. So you see, you have uh, the beams which are uh, raised. Inside the body of the pyramid, they built the slide of the counterweight, which is Grand Gallery, the, the blue uh, room I, I show you. At this level, to reload the counterweight, only uh, 100 people were uh, enough. But uh, with this counterweight, they were able to raise beams, uh, uh, waving uh, six. 60 uh, tons. The, the slope of the, uh, of the ramp is 4 degrees, 7-8%. Uh, So you see, you have a, a, a beam on a sled with rollers under the, 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 the sled. And uh, for the first, uh, first section of uh, the hauling, Egyptians dug a slide in the bedrock of the plateau. And this slide is still in the plateau, but below Khafre's pyramid. We have clues that this slide was there. And once uh, the, the beam came to the, the base of the external ramp, the beam was uh, rotated for 80, 18 degrees, uh, 80 degrees and uh, was uh, pulled by the counterweight inside the <coughs> Grand Gallery. You have a system of rope to, to uh, ease the friction, they uh, add the logs. Uh, wooden logs. I can't go deep on the explanation because it's too, too complex, but it was easier. And you can see also that when they built the King Chamber, other workers were able to continue the construction of the pyramid. At uh, year 16, level uh, plus 45, this is the uh, construction of the King Chamber. You have uh, five ceilings plus a, a roof, a rafter, in uh, Tura Limestone. I won't explain why uh, tonight, but tomorrow you will know why, for the people coming, you will, know, you will understand why you have five ceilings. It's linked to the fact that the chambers roofed with uh, corbelling cannot uh, bear the load, oblique loads. So it's for tomorrow. You see, you have small pyramids built uh, around. You have the quarry, uh, which are uh, quite uh, uh, finished now. You see, uh, I'm in the middle of the... Uh, we will go to. We, I, I will cut the pyramid in two parts, cross section, and you will see what's inside. Uh, what is brown? It's just uh, like uh, invisible stones huh, to to understand the. 
the, the inside. Uh, inside the Grand Gallery, you have a trolley with uh, three granite plugs, blocks, uh, as a load. On the other side, on the south, you have uh, uh, a platform to carry the, the beam. And uh, when the counterweight slides down, the beam on the other side rises up. And uh, on the top of the pyramid, you have uh, 200 guys, only 200 guys to rise uh, this pyramid. And at this level, with the, uh, the slope of the, of the ramp, you need 1,000 guys. All the details, you can see all the details on the stones in the pyramid. And the pyramid is built layer after layer. At this point, when, once the beam is at the level, the, the beam is uh, unloaded from the, 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 the chariot, and uh, the counterweight is at the bottom of the Grand Gallery. The problem is not a problem of weight, it's a problem of, of weight on one piece. So, uh, Once the, the, the platform is unloaded, the platform is free, is empty. Then the platform is loaded with small blocks, but for uh, the weight of 40 tons, uh, maybe 40 tons for uh, some blocks, and the, the platform carrying the, the beam on the first, on, on the rising, now will become will become the counterweight of the counterweight. You understand? It's a question of balance. So once the, the platform is loaded with enough load to reload the counterweight, the guy we, who were pulling the ropes are now uh, breaking the, the brakes to uh, avoid a, a, a quick uh, slide of the... So when you are at the level, the platform is unloaded, and the small blocks will be raised again along the, 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 the slide, the lateral slide. Everything is sp uh, speed, but uh, it was very, very slow. <laughs> so once you have all the beams of one ceiling, like uh, you have already uh, the, uh, the, the, the ceiling uh, under, uh, below, the ropes are uh, uh, taken out and the, 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 the beams are pushed to uh, cover the, 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 the roof. And uh, during that time, you have still the rollers for the uh, Tura limestone facing blocks holding the, the blocks through the internal ramp with the only problem or uh, uh, this is uh, the price to pay. At, at this level, the ramp is at the horizontal. So this, the ramp will not rise uh, at this level. Uh, uh, the ramp will stay at the horizontal and will start again at the other uh, side. Uh, so you can see that the pyramid is... Uh, It's almost finished, but uh, you have uh, at this level at this level you have eighty five percent of the volume built but <laughs> at the beginning, I told you that uh, at one third you have two thirds of the volume in fact, the Egyptians were able to go. 70 meters, 85% of the volume, with a large ramp, but a small ramp, external ramp. Now the problem was to build the 76 meters left, but only 15%. And uh, it was the internal ramp, which was uh, built as the pyramid raised. 
And the, the ramp has, was very thin, just uh, three qubits, uh, like uh, 100, uh, one meter and 50 centimeters large, very small, but with two level, levels. Lower level, the guy pulled the sled with the blocks, and the upper level, the guy came back, uh, hands in the pocket. And uh, each team was working on one section of the ramp. You have 21 sections from one room to another room and making uh, round trips uh, all the day. And uh, it was like a, a, a relay, a, a 400 meters relay. The, uh, this was not the, the wooden stick, it was the slide with the block. <coughs> and, uh, so we, we, we go back to the, the end. So the shape of the ramp, inside uh, the, the pyramid, uh, view from, uh, from the top, the shape of the ramp should, like, like, uh, should uh, be like this. So you see, you have the section. The first section is uh, parallel to the base. The fourth section on the south face is parallel to the base. This, this one is horizontal. The other are uh, on an incline because they are always parallel to the face, but as the, the face uh, become uh, uh, smaller, uh, shrinking, the, the, the shape is a, a spiral, the shape of a spiral with uh, this, uh, this shape. In the uh, year 2000, uh, two years after uh, starting work, uh, my work on the pyramid, I learned that uh, a French uh, company uh, did uh, a microgravimetry survey on the pyramids in 1986. So uh, I uh, asked for a meeting with the people having done this uh, survey. And uh, with my father, we went to a meeting in September 2000. Uh, 2000. And uh, when we uh, showed the, the diagram of the ramp, the guy said, ah, there is something strange because in, uh, when we did the survey, we were looking for a room, but we didn't find any room. And, uh, but we found uh, an anomaly. Where we were unable to explain the anomaly because uh, it was strange. And uh, it was lower density. So we know the density of the stone, of the granite, of the Tura limestone, local limestone. And uh, the guy said, oh, Something is strange because we have a, a strange density inside the pyramid. <coughs> what is green is the average density of parts of the pyramid. And when you look at my diagram and you look at the drawing, it's quite, uh, uh, I, I won't say amazing, but uh, it's uh, questioning, asking why this shape. And the guy said, you avoid this shape inside the pyramid. So for me, it was a, a, good, uh, a, a, good, uh, a good answer and a good... Uh. In 2008, uh, Chris told you about a National Geographic uh, documentary. I did uh, three documentaries at the same time, one for National Geographic, one for French TV, and one for NHK Japan. And, uh, as I was not uh, an Egyptologist, I didn't get the authorization to climb the pyramid, but my friend, the Egyptologist Bob Breyer, was uh, get the authorization, so he climbed uh, to, to this notch. This notch is uh, quite strange because it's just uh, blocks which were uh, robbed by the... In fact, you see, the pyramid behind Khufu's pyramid is Khafre's pyramid, and on top, you see, the facing blocks are still there. And uh, in fact, uh, in the Middle Age, the quarrymen went to the pyramid to pull out the blocks, the facing blocks, to build mosques and the palace in Cairo. And in Cairo, when you go to Sultan Hassan Mosque, you can see on some stones, Khufu stamps. So <laughs> it was easier for them to, to rob the stones on this pyramid. And uh, this, uh, uh, this notch, 
uh, was in very intriguing for me because this notch was on the path of my spiral. And uh, I asked Bob Breyer, if you go, uh, you climb uh, to the notch with the ca cameraman and, uh, and you look at the, 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 the pavement if, to see if it's flat or it's... Uh, so he climbed to, the, to the, the notch with the cameraman. I was uh, at the bottom of the pyramid at the base and uh, quite anxious. And when he went back, he told me, uh, Jean-Pierre, uh, you see, uh, the floor is not very, uh, very, very flat. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you that it's not very flat. But uh, it's something very strange. I went in a room with a cupola. So Bob is at the level, and you see you have a, a, a void, a, a hole in the, in the back. And he went inside a room. A large room is three meters by three meters. And uh, this room was larger at the time of the construction. And this room is just at the place where I said the, the, the sleds were rotated. And uh, before uh, 2008, uh, I was not sure that Egyptians were able to build rooms for the rotation. So I kept the notch open in my, uh, some notch like the, the one on the picture, for the rotation. And the guy, uh, the, the, the internal ramp was only one level uh, ramp. And the guy has to go back to the, the, the uh, lower notch by the extern, external, by the exterior. And I found that very silly. And uh, the fact that Bob found this, uh, this chamber, this room, made that I changed all my uh, theory and everything is from the inside now. You have, you have seen that uh, the pyramid is built and you don't have to come back to face the pyramid. And uh, I think also uh, Egyptian, uh, you have, uh, in the, I say, in, the, in DNA. One day uh, I was at a meeting with some people and uh, in the evening she told me, oh, I have seen something strange uh, from the balcony and uh, I shoot the, the, the video. And <laughs> it was a, a building site. They, are, they were preparing a building site for, uh, to build a mosque and uh, they were testing the, the soil, the ground, to understand which load the, 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 the foundations. And uh, for them, it was easier to do with uh, 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 simple things. And uh, they did that with sandbags. <laughs> sandbags. And uh, we, you will see the video. November 2005. You see, the inside is just poured with sand. You have a guy uh, looking at the edge, and they were close to the sidewalk. So, uh, uh, and in January 2006, they were uh, building with an internal ramp. It's still in the DNA of the Egyptians. <laughs> and look at the guy in, with the blue uh, pant. He's going, and uh, the, the ramp is too short, so he has to go back, but with a two-level ramp, you don't have to go. So you see, uh, this is in the brain of the Egyptians. And uh, I, uh, another friend found a, a, a letter, a text, a text from a, a, a British colonel during World War II. He was uh, in Cairo, and uh, he went uh, to uh, a, a, a factory, uh, 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 carton, uh, you know, paper uh, to, 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 to make a ba uh, box. And, uh, and uh, he went in the, in the courtyard of the factory and he saw a, a, a lot of uh, rice, uh, ball, uh, say rice balls, uh, uh, straw, uh, you, rice, Rice straw balls. 
and uh, pile up like pyramids and uh, 20 meters high. He asked to the manager of the company, uh, it's war, uh, you had built shelters for the workers because uh, I see that you have that all the, at the base, it's a shelter. And the guy said uh, to the colonel, no, no, it's not shelter. We asked to the uh, workers, you have to pile up these uh, balls of rice straw, uh, do it like you want. And the guy, the guys did that with an internal ramp, rising in zigzag inside the... So it's in the mind of the Egyptians. <laughs> and the guy wrote in the journal, uh, GEA is a journal of uh, Egyptology uh, uh, in Egypt, and uh, he asked to the Egyptologist, could you uh, tell me uh, if it's not the best way to build the pyramids? And he, got never, he never got an answer. But uh, I uh, give an answer. <laughs> so you can see that uh, there is no waste. Everything is uh, un uh, envir environmental f uh, uh, friendly. And uh, it's easy because it's... Uh, you, you work, you are safe because you, you, you make the, 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 the perimeter with stones so you won't fall uh, on the other side. You are inside your, uh, your, your building site and uh, it's built slowly and surely. That's it. You, you can go to this uh, website, it's a friend uh, who has a blog and uh, you have a lot of... We have a few minutes for questions and I'm going to invite Stacy Davidson to join us up here on stage. Um, Stacy, and let me introduce you, I, I mentioned earlier she is our resident Egyptologist and the only Egyptologist in Kansas City. We are so fortunate to have her here with us at JCCC. Stacy holds a graduate degree in Near Eastern Studies and Egyptology from the University of Michigan and has done archaeological field work in Egypt. Trans, uh, as well as working in several museums. Her vocation is preserving and transmitting the language, literature, history, and culture of the ancient Egyptians by making this information accessible to interested students of all ages. Uh, next month, Stacy will co-lead an international study trip that will focus on Egyptian and Near Eastern objects, collections, and monuments in London, Oxford, and Berlin. This educational opportunity is the first of its kind for JCCC and for the Kansas City metro area. If you would like more information about her courses and lectures, she maintains a blog at blogs.jccc.edu slash sdavid22. And that'll be on our screen too. We'll have that on our website later. Please welcome Stacy Davidson. Thank you, and thank you all for coming tonight. This has been such an exciting presentation. We are truly honored to have Jean-Pierre come to speak to us. I'm sorry for my French, English. Uh. <laughs> well, I think we could all understand, and the visuals were wonderful as well to help illustrate. So thank you. Um, yes, another round of applause, please. So we do have a few questions. Um, the first question we'll start with is that at the beginning, you mentioned some of the other pyramids that were built before Khufu's pyramid, like the Bent Pyramid and yes. the Red Pyramid. Um, the question is, is there any evidence for internal ramps in those pyramids or at the other two pyramids at Giza? All the large true pyramids of Egypt from the fourth dynasty are built thanks to an internal ramp. The, the, the path of the internal ramp is, could be uh, different from one pyramid to another one. Uh, I can tell you that in the red pyramid, as the pyramid is, uh, uh, as the slope, uh, the facing uh, uh, at 43 degrees instead of 51 degrees in Khufu, the Egyptian built uh, in another way with an external ramp, 
but the, the, the path of the internal ramp is not uh, spirally, is running along a diagonal. So uh, it's uh, another way, but the, the fact is the process is not the shape of the ramp, it's a process to get an internal ramp inside. In the bend pyramid, the lower part of the pyramid, you have two, sl two, two slopes, uh, 54 degrees and 43 degrees. The base the at, 40 uh, f at uh, 54 degrees has a spiral ramp on four sections, and uh, at the uh, uh, change of the slope, the ramp is going on the diagonal. Uh, you ask me if I have evidence my evidence are just my knowledge about the construction of the pyramid. And uh, my knowledge is about uh, 17 years. And uh, I understood how the guy worked. And uh, for, uh, for the Red Pyramid, I can, from the topography of the plateau at uh, Dashur, I can tell you that the external ramp was coming from one side, east side. You have, uh, for the blocks coming from Tura, from the Nile, and you have uh, Still, now, you have from satellite or uh, from a, uh, satellite picture, and on Google you can see it also, you have trace of the old external ramps from the quarry, and the directions of this ramp shows that uh, they went on two edges, on two corners of the, of the pyramid, of the red pyramid, uh, one on the, to, to, to go faster on, on the construction of the red pyramid, the guy, Build two ramps, one starting from the southeast corner, one starting from the northwest corner, and like uh, 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 in, in, uh, in the malls, when you go in the malls, you have uh, escalators crossing each other the same way. So they, they were able to go very fast. And we, have, we know that this pyramid was the latest of Snefru. Uh, of Snefru. It was al already old, and uh, they have to go very fast. And we have marks of uh, stones with uh, stamps from the quarrymen, and the speed of the construction shows that the guys were very, very fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, imagine also that to build a section, to, to go from one layer to another layer, to, to rise from one meter, just maybe one meter, for example, one meter, you need to build only 12 meters of ramp and you have uh, at the lower level you build one layer in uh, three months four months so in 15 days you you build your section your one meter section so the 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 ramp uh, rise very uh, quickly and it's not uh, a lot of materials it's just a few blocks if you had to build an external ramp it's a huge ramp it, it, it must be a huge ramp Thank you. Sparing time, always yes. sparing time, because the, the guy didn't know how long the king, the king will live. And you have an example of pyramids in the Selkemket, Kaaba. Mm -hmm. the, the king died very early, so the pyramid was ended, because in Egypt, a king who died, the next will not build the pyramid for the, the dead. Mm -hmm. Because in Egypt also, you have, you have not have a, a calendar like us. Mm -hmm. The calendar was, mm -hmm. the king died, the calendar stop. The new king arrive. Year one of the of the reign. So uh, the guy were just for uh, their, uh, during their uh, reign. It was uh, the timing was very uh, yes. short and. Uh, Excellent. Thank you. Um, the next question: What was your most exciting moment as you did research in Egypt? Uh, one of my. Uh, most exciting moment was the first time I saw the pyramids, really the pyramids, because uh, when I started uh, working on the pyramid, I have already traveled everywhere in the world, but never in Egypt. And I started in 1999. I have never seen the pyramid at that time. So I went to the pyramid in October 2004. But uh, as an architect, it was not a problem of looking at stones. It was a problem of uh, design, of uh, mm. thinking, of conception. On, uh, it was uh, just a, a, a brain uh, research. And I, I was free. In my brain, I was free because uh, I was not uh, 
uh, focus on this stone, this stone. Oh, I was on, on in the concept. And this one uh, was one very, very nice moment. And another one was when I went inside the pyramid for the <coughs> documentaries. I went inside the reliving chambers, in the last reliving chambers, and you have uh, three million tons of stones above you. And you look, and this is perfect. You have two centimeters, three centimeters uh, settling. Say, but you say, oh, no problem. 40, 45 centuries here, no problem. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. Uh, the next question. Uh, how did Egyptologists receive your theory? Did they like it? Did they not like it? <laughs> <laughs> As I said often, uh, I think that Egyptologists never went <coughs> trying to understand how the pyramids were built because they are not uh, prepared for that. They learned a lot about history, about hieroglyphs, about diggings and things like that but they are not architects. And the pyramids were built by architects. I am an architect, so I think I am uh, um, competent to, to talk and to work on the pyramid. Egyptology began with Napoleon and the expedition d'Egypte. It's uh, 200 years uh, science. And uh, at the beginning, the Egyptologists uh, look at me uh, one guy, a very, very famous French one, told, I, I sent him uh, my, my, my theory uh, in 2002, 2003, and uh, I got no news, so I gave him a call and I asked, uh, do you have a look at my theory? And he, he, he replied on the phone, oh, you are the guy with uh, uh, subway corridors? <laughs> it is completely crazy. But he didn't notice, uh, look at it, huh? it was. And, uh, but uh, I have some uh, Egyptologists who are uh, uh, in private, are uh, backing my work, uh, and uh, I uh, know uh, Dr. Dieter Arnold, I met him at uh, the Metropolitan Museum in New York, I met him on site at Dachour, uh, Rainer Stadelman also, I met him in Dachour, and I did some work for him, uh, Peter Demanuelian at Boston, at Harvard, and uh, Bob Breyer, my, my, my good friend Bob Breyer, who was the first one to say, Jean-Pierre, you are right, I will go with you. I say, okay, we are. he's a specialist of mummies, so I learned a lot of ginger. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, I think, uh, you know, everybody knows uh, Dr. Zahi Hawass, the famous uh, Egyptologist. Uh, I know him well. He, he wrote a foreword for one of my book, and uh, when President Obama went to uh, Cairo in, nine, in 2008 or nine, he went to the pyramids, and at the end of the trip, he asked to Dr. Hawass, eh, Doctor, but uh, my question is, how the pyramids were built? And Dr. Hawass said, the only question left is to, to understand if the, the, the ramp was spirally outside or inside, like the French scholars say. I said, well, it's okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, he wrote about my theory in the book, but uh, this guy has a big ego, and so <laughs> I know him, I know him very well, uh, and uh, uh, he, he wrote a book and said his idea is the spiraling uh, ramp outside, but uh, he said uh, uh, he presents the things that uh, I have talking about the internal ramp spiraling inside the pyramid, it's the same. There is no difference. Could be outside, inside is the same. <laughs> oh <my>. Yes. <laughs> the, the only problem with Dr. Awas, in 2005 I've prepared a, 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 a big file, an application for, a, for a, a survey. I had a big companies with me. I have Thales for the radar. I have a universe, French university. I have, a lot of uh, seven, seven techniques, and uh, I have a, a file seek like that with uh, Arnold and Stadelman as, uh, as uh, supporters, but he never uh, took the file. But 
I think he missed the train that day because the train is running now. If you want to, to know more about the pyramids, you can go to, uh, uh, maybe you learned about on the TV, on the newspaper, on the internet, you have a, a, a mission running uh, right now called uh, Scan Pyramids. If you go on the internet, Scan Pyramids, this is a mission, uh, a, a long, uh, a long uh, mission because uh, this mission will, will last for one year, maybe more. And uh, I will tell you about this in, in a few months. Okay, thank you. I think we have time for one more question. Um, so at the beginning, you mentioned that it was your father who had the idea. Yes. For the internal ramp. Yes. Um, I have to okay. give him it's credit. A, yes. yes. And what made you take the idea and oh. then make it your life? You see, uh, I will be, uh, I will turn 60, uh, 65 in two months. But uh, I say, uh, I think that life is very short. And I understand it's very short. <laughs> but uh, all my life, I did what I was willing to do. And I w always worked uh, uh, by myself. I was a private architect. Uh, and uh, I am uh, married with my wife since 45 years. So, so you see, uh, we have, uh, and we are al always together. And uh, in 1996, she told me, uh, two years uh, before, two, three years before, mm -hmm. she told me, uh, we have everything. If we uh, uh, keep going on like that, we will die before we have did, uh, made something else. You are a good architect, you have, we have money, we have everything. We have to stop everything and to start a new life. I said, yes, it's very, I was uh, 48, and, uh, 45. And uh, I say, okay. And we, I, I uh, stop my job and uh, I have a little money uh, aside and uh, we went to New York for uh, one sabbatical year in New York. And uh, in 1996, 97, it was the beginning of the 3D uh, drawings. It was the beginning of internet. I understood that, th at that time, I understood that <coughs> this will change the world. So I said, oh, internet will be good. 3D uh, uh, design will be good for me. But I have to, to find an ID because when you are the owner of an ID, you have no concurrence, you have no, uh, it's your ID. Mm -hmm. Singers, uh, writers, all the people who have their, their ID are, have the copyrights, have the, so they are free, they, 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 can, uh, they can do, uh, and you can work everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I, we spent one year uh, in New York, I went back to Paris, I start uh, making some websites and I say, oh, it's not the solution because I will be uh, a slave of the, and I will have a lot of uh, people making uh, websites. So I, I say, we have to go back to New York and uh, to find. And one day my father uh, sent me, uh, uh, give me a call and say, oh, I have an idea of the pyramids. And uh, I say, oh, you're, you're boring with your idea. <laughs> Let me, <laughs> let me, and uh, finally when I came back to Paris, uh, I told him, oh, okay, I will help you, I will uh, uh, make your 3D drawings for the pyramid, and uh, I will, uh, but uh, first thing uh, you have to do, you have to buy a computer, you have to, he was, uh, he was, uh, what is it, In, uh, 78 uh, old. So he learned computers, he learned writing emails, and, uh, and he, he keep, uh, my, my mother went uh, through Alzheimer at that time, and uh, she died in 2005. But the, the story of uh, Khufu and the pyramid what, uh, was a link, uh, a family link, mm -hmm. and uh, that kept my father uh, very, very strong and uh, uh, thinking a lot, and very, uh, very pleased because we, we, we were uh, very uh, friends and uh, 
he, 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 he kept like that until he, he died. He was uh, near uh, 82, uh, 92, 92 years. And uh, this is a part of my story also. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, a relationship between a father and a son. And uh, I, as I said at the beginning, uh, in fact, uh, I did 95% uh, uh, of the, the job, but the ID is, was his ID. And I, in fact, uh, the more I was uh, digging in his ID, the more I changed his ID because the first, this first drawing was a, 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 a round sp uh, spirally uh, ramp, and uh, it was not easy to design on 3D, so I said, no, we have to go. <laughs> And uh, that's it. And um, since uh, 17, 17 years, uh, I, I, I do only this. I, I, go, I went through difficult moments. For seven years, I didn't earn any money. So I, I uh, sold everything I had. And uh, I have nothing. Uh, I have just my uh, T-shirt, my jeans. But I am very pleased, very happy, because I have a s wonderful life. And, uh, because I do what I want. And uh, I want also to, to tell the people, uh, go for your life, because uh, you have only one life. I, uh, I deal with dead people for 17 <laughs> years. <laughs> and uh, say, I, can I, I am sure that we will die. Mm. Uh, the later, the better. Mm. Thank, you. Uh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, uh, excuse me for my... Uh, I, I, I am not a, a, a true lecturer, and um, I had my last lecture was uh, 14 months ago. Uh, so. Uh, well, you have another one tomorrow. I have another one. So I hope and that uh, some of you can come. It's at one o'clock. Second part is very interesting because I told about uh, construction, but um, tomorrow it's what is inside the pyramid. Okay, so because remember, this is in the Nurmen. There is Nurmen. some stuff to discover inside this pyramid. One o'clock. One o'clock. Yes. Okay. Thank you for coming. <laughs>